Let's uh, just recap what we learnt in module 10. So, module 10 was dedicated to partial differential equations and uh, initially in the, in the first lecture I told you about the different kinds of partial differential equations and I tried to give you some physical idea of where partial, partial differential equations appear in various applications and the different kinds of partial differential equation. In the second lecture I talked specifically about a technique that we learnt uh, to solve partial differential equations that is called the separation of variables. And we said that you know this is the technique that basically converts a partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation. And uh, we looked at some simple examples of separation of variables. Okay. And then uh, in the third lecture which was a fairly long lecture, we took the two dimensional wave equation and uh, we solved it uh, using the separation of variables you for two different geometries one where we had a rectangular geometry and the other where we had a circular geometry and uh, what we saw was that in the rectangular geometry we just got sines and cosines whereas in the circular geometry we got we got bessel functions so we had to use the power series method which we learnt in when we learnt the solution of ordinary differential equations so we had to use that method to get the solutions for the circular problem Okay. And what we saw is that just by using a spherical a, a plane polar coordinate system, we got uh, equations that looked very different okay, that had uh, additional terms and it did not look like a simple wave equation, it looked more like a Bessel equation. Okay. So, that is what we did. So, so, in some sense we have been doing examples throughout this module. Okay, because uh, as such, there is only one technique that we actually learned. Now, uh, so so today I'll uh, I'll do one more example, which is uh, which is the diffusion equation. Okay, which we have already seen when we saw Fourier transforms. So so again, now Fourier transform is another technique used to solve partial differential equations. So so we will look at we will look at uh, this. Uh, diffusion equation, how, how that is solved in uh, using Fourier transforms. Now, I have been doing all this, uh, you can you, you can find very good references in uh, Macquarie chapter 16 is partial differential equation, 17 is Fourier transform. So, at least what I will be doing today, uh, you will find in chapter 17. In Krasik, chapter 10 is integral transforms and chapter 11 is uh, partial differential equation. So, the, so, in these places you can find, but in any case uh, these are very standard topics. So, you will find lot of sources on the internet and other places. Okay. So, now, so now let us look at the diffusion equation. Okay. So, the diffusion equation is written as d times dou square c is equal to so, d is a constant, a positive constant and this is dou c by dou t. So, it is just the first derivative. So, in a wave equation you had a second derivative here, okay. in this equation you have a first derivative. Let us uh, look at the following case. Okay. So, so, we look at, uh, so, so c is generally a function of r and t okay. and we will consider the case when uh, c of r t can be written as c of r t. So, that means, uh, in other words uh, depends only on radial distance or independent of theta and phi. Okay. So, so we look at this particular case. Okay. So, let us try to solve this. Okay. Now, whether you solve it in uh, 2D or 3D, okay, there they will be a difference. So, so let us take the case where, uh, okay, so for simplicity we will do this in 2D. Okay. In, two, in 2D. Okay. Uh, 3D is not much different. 
Okay, so just to emphasize, so so if you see the Laplacian, okay, so in two D, your Laplacian looks like d square by dou square by dou r square plus one by r dou by dou r one by r square dou square by dou theta square. Okay, in three D, your Laplacian looks like so, so if I expand it, I can write it as dou square by dou r square plus 2 by r dou by dou r plus 1 by r r square dou by dou theta of sin theta dou by dou theta <coughs> plus 1 by r square sin theta dou square by dou phi square r square sin theta here, r square sin square theta. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay. So, so uh, if you have, if you have a function that is independent of theta and phi, then this term will go away, and in the in two d in three d, all these terms will go away. Okay, so these terms will go away. Okay. So. Uh, so, uh, so the only difference is uh, only difference. So, so if you take away the if you take away the theta and phi parts, so 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 if I take away all these parts, all these parts, okay, then I'm left with only this part. And the only difference between two D and three D is that in two D you have one by r, in three D you have two by r, okay. So that's the only difference. Okay, so 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 we can do either in two D or three D. You will get exactly the same solutions. Okay, but let's do it in two D just for convenience. Okay, and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll put some more conditions. We'll put some uh, initial condition. C of zero t is equal to delta or uh, let me put a c0 times a Dirac delta function of r minus 0, r minus 0 I will write as x, x minus uh, 0 delta of y minus 0. Okay, so, so delta of x, delta of y and uh, we will also use the fact that uh, limit as r tends to infinity c of r t equal to 0. So, we so will also say that the c of r t goes to 0 as r tends to infinity. So, what is the physical problem that we have? So, we have at t equal to 0, I have some concentration of some species okay, and the species is, is, is only at x equal to 0, y equal to 0. So, so if, I, if I show it here, so, at t equal to 0, everything is right at the origin. This is t equal to 0. Okay. So, all the all the species is, let me, let me do it in a slightly different color. So, let me show. everything is right at the origin. As t goes, as t becomes greater than 0, okay, what will happen, what you would expect to happen due to diffusion is that this, the species that was there only at the center will spread out. Okay, it will spread out, but uh, if you go very far away, you won't have any species. It will go to zero. Okay, so that is the idea. So it is spreading out from the center, and it's eventually it will go to zero very far away. Okay, so that is the picture. So this is t greater than zero. So, so this is the two-dimensional diffusion that we are going to analyze. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, let's explicitly uh, write out the equation. So so we have. Okay. Now, uh, what I will do is I will set, I uh, will take a Fourier transform. So, take a 2 D Fourier transform okay, C of x y t take it to C of k x k y t. Okay. And if you do this, then uh, what will happen is uh, del square of c of x y t okay this is 
basically dou square c by dou x square plus dou square c by dou y square okay and this uh, this i can write as uh, so 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 now what will happen is uh, this will transform to k x square c c tilde let me call it tilde and this will transform to k y square c tilde. So, if you do a Fourier transform, Fourier transform of a derivative gives you a factor of uh, with a minus sign minus k x square minus k y square. Okay, i k a factor of i k comes before and if you take a second derivative then you get i k square i k the whole square that is minus. So, then my uh, in Fourier transform space my differential equation looks like d times so, I will have k x square plus k y square c tilde is equal to dou c tilde by dou t ok. And let me call this k x square plus k y square as k square. So, I can write this as d k square c tilde is equal to dou c tilde by dou t or this implies c tilde of k x k y 0 is equal to uh, uh, c tilde of k x k y t c tilde of k x k y 0 e to the minus uh, this will be a minus sign minus d k square t ok where k is k x square plus k y square. So, so this is the time part Okay. And now, now we can write the spatial part of the diffusion equation. So, so, if you want to solve the diffusion equation all you need is c tilde of k x k y 0 and this at t equal to 0 you have the condition that at t equal to 0 your c of 0 t is c 0 delta of x minus 0 delta of y minus 0. So, so this is nothing but Fourier transform. So, so this is Fourier transform of C of uh, Fourier transform. So, you have C 0 delta x delta y e to the i k x x e to the i k y y and you can put a 1 over square root of 2 pi if you want minus infinity to plus infinity you have 2 integrals dx dy ok. So, what you will get is that uh, is that you will get uh, c tilde of so, so, so we can evaluate this ok. Now, now the delta function will basically give nothing here. So, this will just give me c 0 by square root of 2 pi ok. So, the integral of the delta function will give me 1 and you will have a square root of 2 pi there ok delta x delta y. So, so when you put x equal to 0 this will go to 1 x y equal to 0 this will go to 1. So, each of these integrals will give me 1 I have a factor of c 0. So, then what you get is c tilde of k x k y at time t is equal to c 0 by 2 pi I have integral e to the i k dot or k x x plus k y y minus d k x d k y. Now, now the so, so in the if you had if you had independent diffusion in the x and y directions then you could write it in this form ok. Now, uh, suppose on the other hand ok. So, this is this is the independent diffusion in the x and y directions. Uh, and wait, I got we should not forget e to the minus d k x square plus k y square t d k x d k y ok. So, so, so this is what it will look like if you had independent if you had independent diffusion in x and y directions ok. Now, uh, now, now suppose in this case 
I can I can write this I can write this in a slightly different form I can write this as c 0 by 2 pi integral e to the i minus i k uh, c 0 by square root of ok. So, the 2 pi it will become 2 pi ok. So, you have an additional uh, factor of 2 pi coming there. So, now you have k dot r ok I am just writing it as k dot r e to the minus d k square t d k x d k y ok. Now, what I will do is uh, change from k x k y to k k theta ok k and k theta. So, so it is you are, you are changing the k x and k y to plane polar coordinates ok. Then uh, what you get is uh, I can write uh, k dot r so, I will just call it theta I won't I do not want to call it call it k theta. So, k dot r I can write as k r cosine of theta ok. So, then my c of k theta c, c of ok sorry sorry I think this should be c of x y t x y t this should be c of x y t because I took the inverse Fourier transform of c of c tilde of uh, c t. So, so, so this is c tilde of k x k y t ok and I am taking the inverse Fourier transform of that ok. So, this multiplied by this c 0 by 2 pi c 0 by square root of 2 pi and then when I take the inverse transform I will take I will get this. Uh, so, now if I write c of k theta t it will look like c 0 by 2 pi and I have integral e to the minus i k r cosine theta e to the minus d k square and now uh, d k x uh, I, I can write as k d k d theta. So, so d k x d k y I can write as k d k d theta ok. Now, uh, if you just look at the theta integral ok. So, so theta goes from 0 uh, r goes from 0 to infinity theta goes from 0 to 2 pi ok. So, if I just look at the theta integral uh, integral 0 to infinity ok. Now, uh, e to the minus d k square t and then I have integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the minus i k r cos theta d theta. So, essentially this this represents a solution ok. So, this is the solution of this of this wave equation ok. Now, uh, this integral this integral ok is a function of k ok. It is a function of k and a function of r. Uh, yeah, uh, d theta and I have a d k. So, this is a function of k and a function of r ok and uh, what you can show is that this this whole integral is a function of k and it is a function of r. In fact, it is a function of k r together ok and you can show that this is exactly equal to 2 pi j 0 of k r where j 0 is this Bessel function so so what you can show by this by this i mean you can you can actually work this out i mean you can uh, you can show that j 0 k r can be written in this form you can do a term by term you can you can do an expansion of this in the series and you can show that each of the terms okay with this factor of 2 pi will uh, is exactly equal to j 0 of k r ok. So, so my final solution has this form c 0 by 2 pi integral 0 to infinity e to the minus d k square t j 0. Now, the 2 pi 2 pi I can cancel with this 2 pi j 0 of k r d r. So, so by Fourier transforms ok you can you can you can get this solution. Now, uh, if you had not used Fourier transforms if you had used spherical if you had used plane polar coordinates like how we did in the in the previous problem 
Okay, like how we did in the case of a circular membrane, if we had used plain polar coordinates instead of using this Fourier transforms, okay, we would have directly got it in terms of J0 of Kr. Okay, we, would have, we would have got our results in terms of the Bessel functions just as uh, we would have got Bessel uh, we, when we do the separation of variables, you would have seen Bessel functions appearing okay, and you would get the solution in this form. Okay. Now, the connection between the Fourier transform method, in the Fourier transform method you end up with, uh, you end up with this, with this, this is what you end up with in the Fourier transform method. Okay. So, C of k, now uh, uh, it is sorry this is not k theta, this should be C of r theta t. Okay. This theta is actually uh, of, of r t, it is independent of theta, so C of r t. Okay. So, so, this is C of r t and uh, this was equal to this. So, this is what you will end up if you do Fourier transforms and then you have to do this integral. So, you have the small matter of doing this integral. When you actually work out this integral, then you will get exactly the Bessel function. Okay. Now, if instead of that you had started by converting to spherical polar coordinates, okay, you would have got, you would have directly got it in terms of Bessel function. Okay. You would have directly got it in terms of integral of the Bessel function okay, and, uh, and you would have gotten this result. So, actually the two approaches will lead to the same result, okay. but uh, in, order to, in order to make the connection you have to know that this integral, you have to know that this integral that is uh, the crucial connection is that J0 of k r is equal to can be expressed as integral 0 to 2 pi e to the minus i k r cos theta d theta. So, this is the crucial connection between the two between the two methods. So, so if you know this connection then you can show that you know whether you do using Fourier transforms or you do using using uh, uh, using plane you using plane polar coordinates and uh, you know actually solving the equation just as you solved in the other case you would get the same solution okay so uh, so so with this i'll conclude this module okay so i've talked about partial differential equations and essentially there is only one method to solve it that is separation of variables once you do separation of variables you can you can use various techniques in some case you can use power series methods you can change your coordinates you can use uh, fourier transforms okay but basically exactly the techniques that you use to solve ordinary differential equations can be used so with this we'll conclude this module here thank you